probably 50% translucency. Incredibly nice piece. Try to make earrings matched, pendants matched, uh, carvings. Now this guy is, you know, the, this is a jade, but it's off a very old bangle. It's not the highest quality, probably 2% translucency. And um, yeah, it's burned, obviously it's glue. It's in a hinged uh, bangle, glue to it. But color is, is nice and, you know, on the wrist, it, it'll be appealing to some people for sure. It's like 54 millimeters though, so it would need to be hinged pretty small. Split lavender pieces, not lavender. One's polished, one's not. Uh, this obviously has a couple uh, cracks in it. Well, not cracks, but fissures. Incredibly nice uh, color. It's a word in Chinese. Um, I could ask some of my Chinese friends. Well, they don't know jade, but... Um, cloudy skies, something like that. And here you go. A jade base. Incredibly small. Drilled all the way through, so you have a um, pendant. You get that nice piece of emerald green. Which, there is no such thing as emerald green. No, you know, any, nobody can decide on these uh, exact color uh, descriptions. And see this guy right here, this ring. And there it goes. It's very durable though. This guy is not emerald. Probably 60% translucency on this guy. But... It's a nice ring, um, about a size eight and a half. Very cool. Two of my favorite pieces. This one's pretty nice just because of translucency, the size and the, uh, the color. I always like those veins, very cool. Very hard to find nowadays. You get a nice 20 point diamond in that guy. Yeah, overall nice piece. This guy I paid like $60 for, but I lost $70 today trading options like a retard. So um, yeah, my cost on this guy is uh, about 130. So I'm gonna have to sell it for 280. I could have sold it for 180 the same day I bought it. Uh, but you know, I was pretty confident in those option contracts. Uh, <laughs> Ended up losing money. Um, this guy also had cut. 80% translucency. Incredibly nice piece. However, there are natural cracks. But the translucency is top notch. And I wear it every now and then. But, you know, I just I don't like to wear a lot of jewelry. These are some rough. I'm not going to be discussing that. Even though they're pretty interesting. This is a nice carving, probably 1977. At first, I believe there were no cracks, but there actually are. You see here, right where that, uh, uh, that orange, GIA orangey brown, uh, or probably, yeah, probably brownish orange uh, by the GIA, brownish orange piece of the carving it's actually a crack one crack in a piece which can be taken out but i'm not gonna uh, risk the, the overall piece the integrity of the piece but pretty good about 35 percent eh, 45 percent translucency on this guy some parts are a bit more translucent than than others if you look at the over here it's incredibly nice but i'll try to take some of this older uh, scratch mark carving there. You see that? Take that off, make it a, all high polish. Keep the overall shape, but try to make it a bit more modern and and sell it. I was gonna sell this, actually, um, I've never gotten an offer on this piece, not a solid offer. People seem to stay away from this kind. I like it a lot. 
I've offered it for a lot, but, and I paid like way too much for this. But I almost took 350 for it. <laughs> Impossible to get though. Um, so I'd rather keep it. I'm trying to, you know, evolving as a person and, uh, you know, just trying to keep pieces that um, I can't sell. If it's under a thousand dollars, it would probably be better to keep it just because of value, you know, it'd be better to keep than um, to sell for nothing because I can't get it again. I used to sell stuff for nothing and um, yeah, I used to sell stuff for nothing and regret selling it. Even though, you know, if I made 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or 200 bucks, uh, you know, I'd rather keep it. I just sold the bangle recently, probably one of the best ever sold in Hawaii. Um, try to say that humbly, but um, for 37.50, Paid fifteen hundred for it. Very nice, um, you know, GI pur purplish gray bangle over two hundred and fifty carats on that guy. Two hundred fifty carats, fifty fifty three millimeters. Very thick, incredibly thick. Probably thirteen thirteen millimeters, fifteen millimeters thick. Thirteen and fifteen, and uh, yeah, that's worth over. If I held it, I probably could have sold it sold it for like eighty five hundred dollars. Or, if, you know, yeah, but you can't, you can't think about the past. It's, it's gone already, you know? So, you know, I'd rather keep certain things like this guy. 60 bucks, you can't find it. You know, I'm, I, and I'd sell that too. I'd sell that uh, for, you know, 180, 280. But I'm not going to sell it until I get a solid offer, which obviously, you know, can get a solid offer on it but probably my favorite piece that i've bought so far is this uh this rough very interesting uh you know not the highest translucency but very nice honey color you get that moss green it's kind of blue but you can't make a bangle out of this it was sold to me um you know, you think, certain people think, uh, oh, there's a crack going through half the piece. I can't make a, can't make a bangle. Well, you can. You can make a hinged bangle. I know the Chinese, they don't like hinged bangles. They like full bangles. Sells for the most amount of money. And uh, they think broken bangles or hinged bangles are, are worthless. They're not worth as much. But they are not worth as much. But they can still go for a good chunk of change, especially to the American market. So I think hinged bangles like this, cut from a piece like this, which would, you know, eh, I'm not sure about the rough cost in Myanmar for this stuff, but it's hard to get for the, any, you know, an average American can't get this type of material. Or wouldn't, you know, would pay way too much for it. It's not that they can't afford it, but it's cheap stuff, you know, this is cheap stuff. Hopefully I can grow. <laughs> but um yeah do my best to cut a bangle out of this and hopefully i can get that done